Hey hi this is admin from admin365 and today we are going to talk about how to set up a tenant from scratch so basically we'll get a license and then we'll start the setup uh, we can start with any subscription we don't have to get that subscription we will just uh, try to create a tenant with the help of the subscription and as you can see we have the business basic open here so for us to create a tenant uh, we'll just try to get the subscription we'll choose one month free option and we will not even get that license later we are just looking for this page and as you can see uh, this is the page which can help us to create a new tenant itself we'll have to uh, on the first field uh, you can see here so it is basically asking for a work or school account so that it can add the license directly to a tenant which is associated to that work or school account but we don't want that we want it to create a new tenant so we will add any email address it could be your gmail address that's completely fine and then it should allow us so now on the next tab uh, we will basically add all the information in here the first name middle name and the last name and the phone number and um, the company name would be the company name which you are looking for on the tenant and the company size could be anything for now uh, we can change it later it does not affect anything and as you can see i have added these information all the steps in here are self-explanatory we'll provide all the information the main step is the one where it asks for the payment method and we don't have to add the payment information the step before that would basically help us create a username and the password we'll directly use that username and password and go to office.com and check the tenant which has been created and from that place we can get the subscription which we want so we'll follow these uh, steps here and you can perform the same and this is a step which is also important it will create a identity of your tenant in the microsoft servers environment Basically, the on Microsoft.com email is used to identify your identify your tenant in a Microsoft environment. And as you can see, we have your business dot on Microsoft.com. We can use the same format. And it once we add the business name, it will let us know whether it is available for us to proceed further or not. If not, then we'll have to modify it in such a way that it is available. Every tenant on Microsoft.com is unique from other and there is no tenant which has the same on Microsoft.com address. So this is available for us so we'll proceed with it and on this step as you can see it is asking us to create an admin account uh, this is what we will use to sign into office.com and uh, we can create a username and it should as you can see it is ending with test 123skill.onmicrosoft.com that is our domain so once we create a username and put a password to it then we'll click on sign up and once we click on sign up it will create a tenant for us with that particular admin account and then we can use that admin account to sign in and set up the later part of the tenant
and as discussed earlier uh, we will skip this part we don't have to add the payment method or add the number of license or users which we are going to use for the trial uh, we will just skip and we'll open a tab and we'll go to office.com and we'll use the admin account which was created in one step earlier and we'll hit sign in and we'll use now uh, the email address which was generated Once we are on the home page, uh, we'll click on the admin here to move to the admin center where we can manage everything on the tenant, uh, be it getting the license or the trial subscription. And this is the main portal where we can uh, do all the things and even we can go to other admin centers as well. The admin center count will increase as we provide the subscription on the tenant. And for now, we can see we have one uh, admin account here which was created and it is a unlicensed account and, and a global admin account. We can add users from here and then get the subscription and then assign the license as well. And uh, if we want to change the domain, we can go ahead and set up a domain as well. So now we have the tenant created. The next step would be to add a domain, a custom domain, which we want. So we'll have to go to setup and then domains here and here we have the option add domain on the top we'll use that option we'll uh, get the domain which we have purchased already in this tenant and uh, we'll just follow the configuration tool here which is open We are just going to verify the domain first so we don't have to move all the service right away. We'll verify it and uh, for verifying we just need the first option and we will add a txt record for the domain DNS record and we'll do it manually as well. And this is the value which we have to update to the DNS registrar from where we have the domain name servers and we will just copy it from here and paste it there and once we have updated it there we'll come back to this place and verify it so this is my domain registrar page for my domain and we will just go to the dns manager and hit add a record and as you can see uh, the type should be a txt record and the host would be just the at symbol uh, you don't have to add it if it is already added here but uh, you can confirm the same in the admin center what are the records there and the point two value will always be the ms value which is given to us by the microsoft on the domain verification page we can go back and forth on this page and check the name and the ttl here and we can update the same on the domain registrar page as you can see uh, as you can see we have the txt name already test skill which is already a part of the host name which is on the DNS page so we'll not replace it we'll just uh, keep it blank and hit save changes Once saved, uh, you can refresh the DNS page and confirm the entry there. And uh, you can wait for a few minutes and come back to the admin page and hit verify. It does take some time to update it, but you can come back to the admin portal and hit refresh and then verify as well. That's completely fine. And it will check and it will let us know whether it is updated. And as you can see, it is not yet updated. And uh, we don't see any actual record there. That means the propagation is still going in the background uh, we'll wait for a few minutes and then we'll hit the try again button again and we'll check the behavior and as you can see the setup has been completed this is just the verification of the domain 
on a new tenant uh, we haven't moved any services to the microsoft tenant yet so now we have a domain verified in microsoft tenant uh, the services has not been pointing but uh, we can add users with that domain right now by going to active users and add the users and we'll, uh, once we add the users with that domain uh, the users can sign in with uh, that email address and password to microsoft but uh, the services which is attached to the domain is not yet moved to microsoft so it will not work for example your uh, email services will not work and we don't have any product license on the tenant so we'll just create a user without a license for now and once we get the license we will assign it to the respective users account we'll review all the information here uh, we are just creating a user account with that domain and we'll click on finish adding and it will create the user account once the user account is created we'll go ahead and get the subscription for it and we'll assign it to that so that it can create the mailbox for it and the respective services on that particular license and once we have a mailbox generated we can go ahead and move the services of that domain to microsoft so that it can start receiving the email but unless we create all the users and the mailbox we should not move the dns to my microsoft as it will affect the mail flow and the email might be lost as well So now basically we uh, till now we were able to create a tenant we were able to add and verify a domain to microsoft tenant and we were able to then create a user with that particular domain which we added uh, do keep in mind again uh, we have not moved the services of that domain to microsoft yet and we will do it later after we assign and migrate all the stuff to microsoft if it is a new domain then you don't have to migrate but if you have a existing service for the email you might want to move the data before you move the dns to microsoft so do let me know guys if you have any question about it any doubt you can drop it in the comment section and you guys have a nice day bye bye take care